Hello everybody, everybody. Here we are for our Facebook Live, our Bladder Meridian Search Response Day Release thing. Um, we're here in the barn with Polly Princess. Her, her real name's Polly, but she's a princess, so I call her Polly Princess. Um, she's a saddlebred. How old is she, Nicole? She's 23. She's 23. She doesn't look it. Um, 23 years saddle. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a Tennessee walker, sorry. And um, she lives here on the farm with us. And just a little disclaimer, we also have here on the farm, we have a couple chickens in here who might start squawking and a couple of dogs because we're going to doing, be doing, come back here, princess, I'm going to let her move around back here. We're gonna, what I'm doing today is I'm going to be showing you um, doing the bladder meridian and how search response stay release works um, with Polly. And I haven't worked with her in, a, in quite a while. Um, she's been on the farm here for maybe a year or a couple years. Um, but we're going to see, see what she tells us. And then um, I'm also going to be doing a little uh, search response stay release on our dogs, um, Jupiter and Nellie. So I'm going to let Polly, uh, I'm just going to talk my way through whatever's going, you know, whatever I'm doing here. So if you have a horse that's a little uncomfortable or nervous in a new place, I just let them walk around. Keep them what I call in the neighborhood. We're in the neighborhood over here, Polly. And just let them walk around in circles till they get comfortable. Come here. If she's comfortable facing that way, we'll come around to this side. Um, for those of you that don't know what um, the bladder meridian technique is, it's a technique we use in the Masterson Method that uses this process called search, response, stay, release. So we use very light pressure, what I call air gap pressure, and we go very lightly down over the horse's body looking for responses or changes in behavior in the horse. The most common changes in behavior are, I, I already did the chicken warning, so you can go ahead and get her. There you go. And... Um, what I call air gap pressure, which is barely touching the hair. It's just almost air gap, just barely touching the hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down a line, so you can see me over here, that starts up here at the pole and goes just a couple inches off the top line. And it goes, uh, follows all the way down a couple inches off the top line of the spine, goes along here, and then when it gets back here, it kind of heads down the hind legs down this, these grooves between the hamstring muscles and it goes, uh, I'll just show you from this side, Co follows just a couple inches off the center line of the back of the leg and then it goes down over the hock and it follows this groove between the flexor tendons and it goes over the fetlock and then it terminates down here on the coronary, coronary band just a, above the hoof, um, the hoof wall. So that's the bladder meridian. It's a traditional Chinese medicine meridian. We just use that as a pathway to follow to start working with the horse. But you can actually do this anywhere on the horse's body. And, and how the process works is I'm going to watch her eye. And she'll, I, hopefully she'll start to calm down a little bit here and get comfortable. But as I do this, you don't have to start there. You can start anywhere. But I'm going to start here because there's less mane. Just use air gap and go very slowly like this and watch right there. For some change in behavior, usually it's a blink or a twitch, the lips will twitch. In some cases, the horse might start to fidget, but that's the search part. And then the response part, search, stay here, princess. Come on back here. Yeah, she's a little nervous. She doesn't live in here. She lives out in, the, in her paddock. Okay, well, she's actually doing a pretty good job of showing how it works. As you bring your fingers lightly over the body, you look for a change in behavior, like a blink or a fidget, and you'll wait there. Search response, you'll stay there till you get a release. And a release response is a yawn, lick and chew, or a yawn, or a snort and sneeze. Now, she's going to... That didn't take long. <laughs> I just went down, followed down her bladder meridian line, and that was enough to get her feeling what was going on in her body, because they block out... They survive by blocking out pain and tension. That's how they survive in the wild. So if I put pressure on her, she can block that out. But if I don't put any pressure on, just very lightly, I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to watch for a blink or some change. Maybe there. If you're not sure, just stay there and see what happens. Or go back over, slowly over, and if you get a response at the same spot, right here, then just stay there. It means she's feeling something under your hand that she would normally be blocking out. And if you stay here long enough, in her case, not very long, and wait, search, response, stay, the stay is the wait part, till the body starts to go from the bracing, uh, blocking out mode, which is the sympathetic nervous system, to the 
uh, releasing mode, the relaxing mode, which is the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's a process where we can look, we can search for where the horse is holding tension, and then if by waiting there, we give them a chance, their body a chance to release it. Now here's another sign of relaxation. Um, is but that's a release on the other end. We'll get a we'll get a, a pooper scooper here, but search response. When you get a response, you just wait there and do nothing until you get a release, which is a yawn, lick and chew. And and just by the way, she's demonstrating that we do have another re release response here as they start to relax. So, um, so that's how search response day release works. I'm gonna um, step back after another part of this process. Well, there's, there's, two, there's a few important things. One is the level of pressure, air gap, barely touching the horse. You can do this anywhere on the body. Polly has a lot of tension in her sacrum and hamstrings. Um, she, she was a Tennessee walker. She sh I think she showed and competed in her lifetime, so she has a lot of tension back here. If you go to lift the tail and it clamps down like this, that's a sign of tension on the sacrum. Come in over here a little farther, princess. So... Um, so I can just go ahead and start searching back here. I don't have to start up there. I'm going to st just start back here and do a little searching along the sacrum. There we go. I don't even have to wait for a blink right here. She feels a little uncomfortable when I put my hand here. So what I'm going to do, come here, princess. I'm going to back off a little bit and, and stay a little farther away. Or as I get close to that spot, if she starts, stop right there. Oh, there we go, some more. <laughs> <laughs> more releasing. Well, as we all know, these are all signs of relaxation. I'll wait till she stops there. Are you quite done? Polly, are you quite done? Stick around. So I'm going to search again. And if it's too much for her, actually, she's a good horse to demonstrate on because she has a lot going on. Oh, babe. She has a lot going on. So she's showing all of the signs. So I'm going to slowly come down here right there. Now I'm going to back off my hand and, and take, move even farther away and see what happens. All right? Oh, babe. Oh. If they walk around, just follow them. If, and it helps if you don't take your hand away. Come here, princess. I might have Nicole hold her over here. So when the horse steps away, if she steps away and my hand comes off, she's going to do it again because she knows that that works. So you need to, if the horse starts to move around, just stay with them. I'm going to start up here. Look again for the spot where she tells me it's, she's feeling some tension. Right there. Now I'm going to stay there, and I'm going to back my hand off a little bit and wait. And Nicole's do, doing a good job. She's holding her, but not holding her tight. She's giving her a little room to fuss, but not a lot. Just to, what I call keeping her in the neighborhood. I'm going to just stay here. Every time you do this, it's an experiment. So it, how you respond to the experiment to what she does depends on what she's doing. You can keep her, don't let her go any more than that. I'm going to come on this side. Just keep her in the neighborhood. I'm going to, you can switch hands. I'm going to search around if I can zero in on something here, right there, okay? I'll just go walk with her. She's licking and chewing, so she's starting to relax this area. I'm going to stay a little longer. A lot of these questions come up when I'm demonstrating this, is what do you do if she starts to show release? Do you stop or do you stay longer? Well, you can do either one, either or. If she's still comfortable, I'll search around here right there, where she, she blinks and she gets a little uncomfortable. But if she's okay with it, I'll stay longer. Now, if she gets too uncomfortable, I'm going to stop, okay? But as the part of this process is you have to bring her attention to where she's blocking out the, the discomfort. You have to bring her attention to it in a way she can't block it out, which means by using no pressure and following her responses. I'll keep going here. Right there. See how simple that is? It's really clear. She's pretty clear about it. Now, uh, some horses will just blink and some's lips will twitch, so you'll just stay there. She gets a little more uncomfortable because she's, she's um, naturally a little bit more of a busy horse. She's not super, super stoic, like some heavier breeds, like draft horses. They're very stoic. You'll see an eyelash move. That's the response you're looking for, and you need to stay with that. <sighs> Remember to breathe yourself and have a lot of patience. You just have to have a lot of patience. So one of the reasons we're going back over that, that, that don't let her any more out of that. <laughs> That's good right there. 
One of the reasons we're, we're going over this with this Facebook event is because of our Bladder Meridian Challenge coming up. <laughs> I'm going to stay with her. And in a second, I'll just stop. Yeah. I just want to see if I can get a bigger, another yawn out of her. So if not, it's okay. I'll just move on. Good girl. Whoops, sorry, sweetie. Okay. So I'm going to step back and just let her feel that, okay? Um, I want to tell you about our Bladder Meridian Challenge. So our Bladder Meridian Challenge is um, we challenge you in a nice way to go out and do the Bladder Meridian on your horse or anybody's horse, you know, just ask the owner first. Um, and send us a video or a photo of you doing the Bladder Meridian. And the winner of the challenge, we'll select the winner of the challenge, will get um, a Beyond Horse Massage book from us. And absorb, Partners Absorbing are, are going to um, contribute a $100 gift basket of some of their equine products. But wait, there's more. We're going to extend this to dogs now because now we have the... Sorry, I can't keep my hands off the horse. It's a bad habit, but... Um, uh, we're going to extend this to dogs because we have the Beyond Dog Massage book now. And Absorbing, as we uh, found out, also has a new line of dog products, dog care products. And since we're both Absorbing and Masterson Method are on the same page of, of uh, helping the horses, helping our pets and helping our animals, they've decided to contribute a $100 gift basket of their new canine products. Sorry, I have to do this while I'm talking. I can't not do it. Okay, we're going to move on to something else. But anyways, that's our Bladder Meridian Challenge. And the for more details of this, you can go to our Facebook page, Masters and Method Facebook page, where we have the details on this um, Bladder Meridian Challenge. But I wanted to do this event, this Facebook Live, to show you and remind you, or if there are anybody, anybody new to this, how the Bladder Meridian works, how search, response, stay, release works. Another thing I'm going to do, since we have Polly here, is, and I know she has tension in her sacrum, and I know she has a lot of tension in her pole and atlas. So the atlas and the sacrum are connected. So anything going on back here is going to reflect this tension in the pole or vice versa. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple little things you might be able to do in addition to the bladder meridian and the search response day release. I'm going to do this sacrum float. It's so it's very simple. Can you see okay from there? Okay. <sighs> Let's give her a break. I'm going to let her, her tail's hanging slack. And by the way, this is all in the Beyond Horse Massage book and the Beyond Horse Massage. Uh, actually, the sacrum float isn't in the Beyond Horse Massage book. It's a new technique. But we, included, we include this in our weekend, uh, Beyond Horse Massage weekend course um, because it's such a simple and effective technique to help release tension in the sacrum. Are you quite done, Polly Princess? Yes, people hearing them from all over the world. Oh, we do? Okay, sorry. Uh, Okay, hopefully they speak um, Eng American English. <laughs> now I'm going to let her tail complete, hang completely slack. And sh if she's okay with this, she has a lot of tension going on back here. I'm going to put my hand under the base of the tail here and slowly bring it out this way and watch her eye for very slowly, right there. She feels something now. She's not blinking, but she's backing up. Where she feels it, I'm just going to stay in that position. I'm going to go back and let it hang slack and slowly bring it out right there. Okay, I only brought it out about an um, eighth of an inch or a millimeter for those of you in other parts of the world, about a millimeter or two right there. And just keep it in that position for two or three minutes. And what's happening is she's got tension pulling on her sacrum with, from hamstrings and sacrotuberous ligament. <laughs> and let me know if I'm getting too close. And she, blo she, does, she blocks out that, that, uh, that tension by slowly bringing her tail out till she shows and gives me a sign that she's feeling it, if I keep it in that position and keep her attention on it, her nervous system will go from blocking it out. See the hind legs start to relax here? The nervous system will go from blocking it out to starting to let the tension go. And that's the sympathetic nervous system is the blocking out part, blocking out pain and discomfort. And the parasympathetic is the relaxing part. So you're kind of working with her nervous system. We're going to let it look and chew here and a lot of fidgeting. Fidgeting is often part of the process, okay? If, if you can just stay with it while they fidget and keep your hands soft. The other important part for human is, is we tend to tense when they tense. You need to keep your hands soft and your whole body soft as you do this. I'm going to start over, let it hang slack, and slowly bring it out. If That, that might have been a fly, might have been the bladder meridian. There's a fly up there. But I'll wait till she stops blinking at the fly, and I'm going to slowly bring her tail out. 
about, she's lifting on her own here. So I'll take up the weight and slowly bring it down and find that spot where she's feeling tension, where she gets uncomfortable right there, okay? So that's how the sacrum float works. Now, she already released a little bit. She licked and chewed. And again, do you stop there or do you keep going? You can do either one. If uh, you can just step back and let her feel what's going on, <laughs> or you continue on. So that's the sacrum float. So that's a little added bonus thing here. So uh, can, mm -hmm. can the sacrum float also encourage release in the psoas as well? Does the sacrum float always also encourage release in the psoas muscles? The psoas muscles are core muscles. They attach under the lumbar spine here, and they come under the um, they attach underneath inside the pelvis and inside the femur. Um, any of this stuff on the hind end, the points I was doing back here, you can search all over in the Beyond Horse Massage book. There's six points where we focus on, including under the tail points. But any, any um, doing search response stay release in this area, and including the sacrum float, helps release tension in the deeper muscles. And it's interesting, the lighter you go, if you go in this area of the lumbar and find it, look for right there, she, she does not, she's not a big blinker, but she tells you <laughs> with other changes in behavior, that will help release tension in the psoas muscles. But all, anything on the hind end, including the sacrum float and the hind end points, will help release tension in the psoas muscles. Um, so that's the answer to that question. Now, how much tension in the psoas? It, 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 you know, it, it, it's not like a magic button you push and then the psoas is good. Like, there can be a lot of tension in the psoas, or sometimes the psoas muscles just shut down. They just stop, they, and you just need to wake them up. So it'll, it'll help. Yeah, that's the value. You, you always learn something from these guys. So a lot of horses there... Oh, the question was, what do you do with a nervous horse that won't hold still while you're, while you're working on the horse? And she's a good example of what to do. So a lot of horses, uh, the, you know, when I'm working on them, or a lot of, you know, if you're working on them, a lot of times they just go to sleep. Um, in Polly's case, <clears throat> we're in a new barn, so she's a little nervous. But also she's got, she, you know, she's 30 years old and she's got a... Um, She's got a long resume of, of stuff going on in her body. So when you start to find that stuff, some horses will get nervous and they'll move around. When you're doing search, response, stay, release like this, like I said, you need to walk with them. And if I'm here, say, for example, and let me find, she's starting to get more comfortable with it, but let me see. If I'm doing a point here on her rump and she steps away and my hand comes off when she steps away, she just learned that stepping away makes my hand go away. So you have to learn to walk with them. So often with the horse, I'll, I'll either tie them, you know, I'll tie them safely to twine or something or have somebody hold them and they'll go back and forth and I'll just walk back and forth with them. You get pretty good at your dance steps doing this with some horses. But that's the key is just to stay with them. If it gets too uncomfortable for the horse, back off a little bit until you find where they're more comfortable. You can do it from this far away. It's not voodoo. It's just keeping their attention on the area in a way that they can they can't block it out, um, or you can come up, start up, where, go where they're more comfortable. Say if I start up here at her pole, and that's too much for her, I would start farther down the neck, and then do the bladder knee, and then come back up to the pole. If you're doing the other movement techniques that we have, um, and the horse is moving around, you have to learn how to stay soft with them, stay soft with your hands, and move with them. So I, I might do another little wiggle in her pole and in, in her neck right now and because uh, I know she has tension up there and I'll pick the lead rope and she probably will move around and I'll show you how that happens. This is a little more, you know, not the purpose of the search response stay release, but it's interesting because that's what she's brought up and we had a question. Hand on the nose very lightly, other hand lightly up here behind this junction. I'm going to gently wiggle her nose very lightly and soften. Slide my hand down here a little, bring her nose around a little bit. Wait till she stops fussing and very gently wiggle, soften. The first thing to do is if they start to fuss is soften. And then come on down and wiggle my way gently down her neck and then back up her neck. Now if she moves, I'll walk with her, but keep my hands and arms soft. So that's the answer, one of the answers to that question of what do you do when the horses move around a lot. Um, another thing is stay calm. Don't get, don't get drawn into bracing against them. Uh, you have to take a deep breath and not get uh, angry at them or not get frustrated because then they pick up on that. So, um, 
So that, that's a little more than search response day release, but um, I'm going to do a check. I'm wondering when you're going to work on dogs. Dogs. Let them know that, you know, Probably, yeah, I, I'll, wrap, I'll wrap this up because I think we got a good demonstration on a busy horse of how to do search response day release. Again, anywhere on the body, but the bladder meridian is a good place to start because it gives you a pathway to follow. Um, Beyond Horse Massage has uh, specific points that we focus on, especially on the hind end that are helpful, uh, but you could do this anywhere where the horse says there's tension. Uh, the, psoas, the lumbar area, lower back, can be sore back, but all, also involves the psoas muscle, since we had a psoas muscle question. And the last question for horses training, how do you know when you're done? If you have a pee um, If you're out of breath from running around behind Polly, then you're done. <laughs> oh, the question was, how do you know when you're done? <laughs> um, there, um, you, can do, you can do a little bit every day. Say you could do 15 minutes of search response day release every day with your horse. Um, if you're doing the whole session on a horse, all of the techniques that you've learned on the weekend or, or on the advanced five day, usually the horse's nervous system is done after, I mean, you can't go much more than an hour or an hour and a half because they're just, they're ner you're working with their nervous system and they just have, they have to have time to process it. Process it. So, um, but the best way to tell if you're done is when the horse is just, they either shut down, they just go dull. They don't respond to anything. Their neck doesn't move. If you're doing movement techniques, they just completely shut down and go dull, or they absolutely won't let you touch them anymore. They'll pin their ears. They'll step away. You know, they'll get. They're telling you their nervous system has has had enough because they have to have time to process all of these changes. You're actually working with their nervous system with this. They're telling you where their nervous system is holding tension, and you're helping their nervous system relax it. So their nervous system has to have time to process. But a rule of thumb: less is always more. Better to do a little bit every day if you have your horse at home. Um, I would say, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of the bladder meridian that you could do every day. But if you do too much one day and you go back the next day and your horse completely shut, is shut down or won't let you touch them, then that means they need more time in between. So that's the answer to that question. Does the horse need a day off after they... If you spend a lot of time, you spend an hour working on your horse, your horse is pr the best thing is a day off the next day. And, and actually more than one day. If you can give them a day or two off after you've made big changes in the horse, um, it's better. You might get on your horse the next day if you've done a lot and your horse might feel a little wobbly. They might feel a little off because their body hasn't, um, hasn't processed the changes and, and reorganized itself. And remind us what the challenge is. The bladder meridian challenge on is horses? on horses is for you to go out and get video or phot photographic evidence that you're do you've done the bladder just to do the bladder meridian on your horse and see and tell us what comes up too you know we want to know what comes up with your horses because you can find a lot about what's going on with the horse she's calmed down a little bit because she's releasing tension and also because i'm giving her i'm stepping back and giving her time to process like there we go oh this brings up another thing a lot of horses they won't show you these releases while you're there polly's comfortable showing these releases some horses you'll get frustrated she hasn't shown me anything but um you, you, go, you uh, let them out in the paddock and they'll start yawning like crazy or you put them back in the stall, they'll start yawning like crazy. So the yawn is a really good indication of a deep release of tension. Um, so there's a lot of things she's bringing up for us um, during this session. Like I said, it's an experiment. You never know what's going to come up with your horse or how they're going to respond. So um, it's just paying attention to their responses, staying light and giving them, stepping back uh, regularly to give them time. Okay? So... I think that probably brings up the doggies. Do you want to go out? Oh, Nicole will be right back. So we're going to, um, thank you, Polly. We're going to let her go out, and we're going to bring in uh, Nellie or Jupiter and do some dogs, and Jupiter's right here waiting. So here we go. So there was a horse walking with its owner, and it was releasing while... Yeah, you can, turn, you can put her out there. Yeah, I said... Uh, um, Kate just said there was somebody watching with their horse, uh, probably on their phone, uh, and the horse started yawning while we were doing this. Um, you'll notice if you're working on a horse here, if you have a horse in the pasture or the paddock with you, they'll start releasing to the horse in the stall next door. Um, I, I'm surprised if the horse next door in the stall doesn't start yawning while the, while the horse I'm working on starts releasing. So they're, they're tuned into each other pretty closely. So why don't we get Jupiter over here? Come here, good boy. 
This is Jupiter. He's about a year old. We've had him for most of that year, I think, nine months of it or so. Um, and so I'm going to demonstrate the, the search response day release on Jupiter. Um, it's the same with horses. You're going to stay very lightly. You're going to watch the eye for a blink. I'm going to back up a little bit here. Hey, come, bud. Hey. <laughs> come here, Jupe. Come here. Come on. Come on, Jupe. He's a little nervous. Come here, Jupe. Come here, Jupe. He wants his mom. He wants his mom. Come here, Jupe. Come here, Jupe. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come here, buddy. Get a little closer. It's okay. I'll take a boy. She's not going anywhere. She'll be right here. Okay, I'm going to just let Jupiter relax, what I call keeping, uh, keeping the dog in the neighborhood. So I don't want to brace against him and force him to stay with me. I just want to keep him in the neighborhood. So um, it's the same process. You can do this anywhere on the body, but the bladder, the bladder meridian line starts up here behind the, on the top of the head and just goes along each side of the spine down the hind leg to the paw. Now, I'm going to just let him get comfortable. The thing with dogs, though, there's a lot more active activity with the dog. You know, they're a lot more interactive with you than the horse. So the horse is sometimes a lot easier to read. You just have to read through that. Now, the way I'm handling him, I'm not, I'm not grabbing him, not tense. I'm keeping my hands soft with him. The thing about a dog is sometimes you have, if you start doing with this with them, I'm going to, and, and I might have to let him go, but sometimes when you're doing this with them and it's too much for them, you have to let him go and then come back again. So you can't force the dog to stay with you, all right? And a lot of these techniques I do with dogs, or when I do this with the dog, it's, I call it a technique of opportunity. Like you're sitting on the couch with your dog. It's not like this where you're designating a time, okay, we're going to do something, which might make the dog nervous or apprehensive. Come here. I may have to let him go. It's okay, bud. But um, while you're sitting on the couch with your dog, just do, start, do some search response, stay release with your dog. Or, you know, sometimes you have to pet your dog to get him to relax a little bit, and then all of a sudden switch to Vladimir Meridian right here. I notice, but with, I've noticed this last minute, every time I get here right behind his shoulder, on this side, he gets a little uncomfortable. So I'm going to just see if I can keep him with me, just staying very light, just, I mean, probably barely touching the back of the hair, and zero in on a response right here. His response is also, I want out of here. Come here. Come here. Find it, and then see what happens. Now, if, if he gets too uncomfortable, I have to let him go. I have to let him go if he gets too uncomfortable. Little boy. And they'll look around for something to distract themselves. Yeah, he's a little too uncomfortable, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him go and get Nelly over here. So you have to keep that in mind. You can't make the dog or the horse stay with you if the dog or the horse is a little uncomfortable. Okay? So, Polly's having... While we're getting Nelly over here, you can put the leash on Nelly if you want, or on him. Yeah. Yeah. Come here. No. Come here. Good girl. Come on over. Come here. Okay. There. And now, I'll give you this for Jupiter. Come here. Uh, that's for Jupiter. So he'll stay over there. Come here, princess. Come on. Good girl. Nelly's a little more, more comfortable with this. So it's the same. Oh, the dates of the Bladder Meridian Challenge are the September 16th uh, to the 26th. I think it's a 10-day challenge. And on our Facebook page, mastersandmethod.com, you'll, you'll uh, find the details of where to send your images. Now, I'm going to do this, the same with Nellie. I'm gonna, now, I know I've done this with Nellie before, and if I find something uncomfortable up here, she's going to roll over on her back, and so then I'm going to do the, her belly, search in areas underneath. So I'm going to search along here. Okay, good girl. Start up here and just search very lightly. Up, oh, that's a fly. Search in here until I get a clear blink. Now, that's a blink. I don't know if that was me or something else, so I'll just stay there and see what happens. Now, when I stay there, she says, oh, I don't want to feel that, so she might start to roll over on her back. But she's doing pretty good so far. But what to do if the, there we go, stay here, sweetie, a little longer. Just, I got to stay light with her and ask her to stay with me. Okay, now this is what happens a lot of times. I'm going to switch and search in under, the, on, under here, in this area here. There are points under the lumbar spine, sub-lumbar points. Again, not to do 
too many commercials, but Beyond Dog Massage has these points. I'm going to ask her to relax her leg out here and just search under here. The, the, actually, the psoas muscles are under here on the dog, too. So, and on the dog, you can actually get a little closer to the sublumbar muscles and the psoas muscles. They attach down here in the groin. Right there is a blink. You see her blinking? That's very clear. And then she's going to start to show the signs. Licking, chewing, yawning, snort, sneezing. Repetitive sneezing. Oh, hang on, yeah. We got turned around again. Oh, we got turned around. And we got to get it back to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, are we there? Yeah, we're, we're there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll try to get over here. So, when she rolls over on her back, I'm going to search in here, and I'm going to watch her eyes right there. You can zero in. So, if I take my hand off and she stops blinking, and I go back to that spot, and she starts blinking, then that means something right there. Then that means right here. There's a correlation between what I'm doing and what she's doing because dogs, horses, animals blink all the time. But if there's a correlation between what you're doing, switch hands, and what they're doing. See, every time I get to this spot, she gives me some sign that she's feeling something there. So I'm going to sit stay with it on that spot, just touching the, there we go, just touching the hair. Don't put any pressure on the skin at all or, or the dog is going to, animal is going to block out what you're doing. I'm going to add a little more in here, which I do with dogs all the time. Just when they're just standing around with me, is this is called the lateral rocking. Stay with me, princess. Get them slight. That's your favorite fly right there. Just get a little lateral. Stay with me, princess. Get some lateral rocking in the spine. It's relaxed movement. So with this, the master's method, we have search, response, stay, release techniques, where we're doing what we're doing today. And we have movement techniques, which involve moving the... Uh, lateral movement of the body and the spine with dogs. We also have dorsal ventral movement, which we do when they're laying down. We have hind leg, we have leg releases, front and hind leg releases right in here. I'm going to see if I can stay here lightly. Stay with me, Nellie. Stay. Stay with me. So, she's, that's her thing. She would, they get a little uncomfortable when you find this stuff right here and they'll start to fidget. So, the, your job is just to stay lightly on that spot until they start to give you release responses. Now, a lot of times with the dog, the release responses, they'll just sit down or lay down. They'll just, and go to sleep. So with the dog, you may do shorter increments, shorter intervals of the body work because they'll just lay down and go to sleep. As long as they're awake, you can do the searching because you can see their responses. But once they go to sleep, then you're pretty much done with the dog for that moment. So I think that's about it. I don't know if Jupiter's going to be... Oh, I didn't. Yeah, let's try it with Jupiter. Come here, Jupe. Come on. Come here, buddy. Where the line is. And um, on our, I just want to remind on our website, <laughs> hey, Boodle, <laughs> he's a little shy. On our website, we have a 17-minute video on how to do the bladder meridian on the horse and the things to look for uh, in responses and changes in behavior. Um, and it's the same basically on the dog, too. I know. <laughs> I'm a little worried about what's going on. Starts up here right be on top of the ear, and it just goes right down about an inch off the center line of the dog, uh, off the spine. Just goes right down there. And that, I'll show you about the speed. Right about like, it's a little hard to tell because he's moving. About like that. About like that. And just watch for a response. Right here. Now, I, I do this on him a lot and on, on Nelly quite a bit too. He's a little poodle. He runs at about 300 miles an hour and he gets really, really tight back in here in the, in the lumbar and in the hips and in the, especially in the hamstrings back here. So when I get back here, he gets a little nervous, but if I stay long enough, light enough, he'll start to release that tension. A young dog like him who runs, uh, plays sometimes too hard. Um, older dogs, you'll notice... They'll have these really hard pads, muscle pads here in the lumbar area, um, and they get sore backs, and you might notice they have a little more trouble getting around, like Jojo, um, our accountant's dog. Um, he's older, and she'll notice when she's out walking him, he starts to do a little hop behind, you know, on one side. And so I'll do some work on him. I'll do some search response, stay release, and I'll do a little wiggling back here to get this loosened up, and, that, and, he, and his gait 
improves. And then it might last a few weeks or more or less. It depends on how sore he gets. And then I'll come and do a little more. Now, you can do this on your own dog on a regular basis. Now that he's relaxed a little back here, I can get a little rocking going here. Both hands, I'm just going side to side in his, in his body and help to release that more. Now, we'd, uh, with Jojo, she does what she can, but, you know, when he gets really bad, then um, I'll come over and do some work on him at, his, at her house. And then he's able to jump up on the couch again, and then he stops doing his little hop along behind. But anyways, that's where the bladder meridian goes. It just starts here. I'll go fast. Along, just along the top. When it gets back here, it just goes right down the back of the leg, right here. See, he's a little uncomfortable here. I'll just stay lightly. And then go right down the back, the side of the leg, down to the toe, the outside toe. That's determination for that one. You'll be um, pretty surprised how much your dogs will release tension in their, in their paws, in their feet. They, they get a lot of tension. Almost toe by toe, you can search for responses and get releases in your dog. So I think, uh, I think that wraps up everything. I have a question here. Oh, we have a question? Dog, dog question. So what do Good you boy. Do when you have a dog that just can't Yeah, so the question is you have a dog that just won't sit still, you know, and can't handle it. What they're telling you is they're feeling, they're blocking, they survive by blocking out the pain and the and discomfort and muscle tension. And when you bring their attention to it, they get uncomfortable with it and they might, they might, it might be a lot for them. What I do it, with dogs especially, I call them techniques of opportunity. So when you just go to work on your dog and you start finding this stuff, then the dog might get really nervous and not hold still. But if I'm sitting on the couch with Jupiter and um, we're watching Lassie or something or Rin Kin Kin, oh, you probably, most of you are too young to know what those are, but we're watching TV. Um, and the dog's sitting next to you, relax, do some searching, do some SRSR somewhere. And, and if where you go, wherever you start, if the dog's too uncomfortable, go somewhere else. Go to the other side or go up to the front if he's uncomfortable in the back or vice versa. Start where the dog is most comfortable. Same with horses. You start where it's easiest for the animal, and then you start searching from there for where there's more going on. Come here, Jupe. Come here, Jupe. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, so that's the answer to that one. Just do it when the dog's relaxed, like a technique of opportunity. The dog's laying like Nellie's laying on the floor on her back. I'll just do some, I'll rock her body side to side to get movement, relaxed movement in, in, the, in the ribs and in the trunk. So... Um, we, we have two types of techniques, I think I mentioned there. Search, response, stay, release, which is just finding where it is and letting the dog's nervous system let it go. And then we have the movement techniques, and that's going through the body, asking for movement in a relaxed state. The key that it has to be relaxed movement. You can't just make, the, make it move, or if the dog is bracing against it, it's not going to work at all. So, is there another one? I, see I can keep one. One more question. Sure. Okay, yeah. So, how do we address a horse that tightens up under air gas? Ooh. Yeah, a horse that even with air gap, they, they, they get too tense and uncomfortable. So um, there's a couple, the couple things. It's, uh, go where it's easier for the horse. So a lot of horses are extremely head shy. If they're, he they're head shy, it's because of tension in the pole, especially if you can't train them out of it. But it's not good to train a horse out of being head shy because they're head shy for a reason. And it's usually tension. So if you go up to do the bladder marine by the pole and the horse's head, eyes widen up and they tense, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can back your hand away till you see the horse's eye soften and he blinks and stay at that distance. And the other is start somewhere else. Go down the, start at the shoulder and go do the, do the bladder meridian on that side and then go to the other side. And sometimes by the time you release tension in the body, you'll go to the part where they're more uncomfortable and they'll be more, they're, they're able to handle it. But it's always, um, you gotta do good. You gotta go where it's more the easiest for the horse and then go where it's more uncomfortable or back off so that it's, uh, it's a comfor comfortable enough for the horse to start to release. And the last thing, before we get out, you wanted to share the details of the challenge again. Details of the challenge. So, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Starting on September 16th till the 26th, we want you to go out and do bladder meridian on your dog, your dog or your horse or your friend's dogs or your friend's horses um, and get video of, of it or photos, something interesting. We want to know and let us know, you know, what you found in your horse. And out of everybody that participates, we're going to choose a winner. Um, and the winner will get the Beyond Horse Massage uh, book for horses or the Beyond Dog, Dog Massage book for dogs. And Absorbing is going to throw in a $100 gift basket of their equine pro products for the horse or, or canine products for the dog. 
And um, so we'll have two winners. We'll have a horse winner and a dog winner. Yeah. Got it. Two winners. And the winner, you know, whoever shares the 20% of their prize with me will be the winner. No, no, I won't be choosing the winner. I probably will be involved. But anyways, we're going to have two winners, one for dogs and one for horses. And why do you find doing Vladimir Dean helpful for the horse? Why do I find doing Vladimir Dean helpful for the horse? Because it um, tension accumulates and builds up in the horse's body over time. <clears throat> and especially once it starts, if they have tension in one area, they're going to be compensating for it in, in other parts of the body. If you can regularly go over the the dog and, I mean, your dog or your horse, just regularly go over your horse and dog and, and peel off the layers, that tension isn't going to accumulate so much. And that's one good reason. Another is it builds trust with the horse. A lot of rescue horses, a lot of uh, people that get Mustangs, um, they have there's a trust issue with horses, a lot of horses, because of their history. And so, um, so by doing this, you're going to, the horse so, or the dog, same with dogs, associates you with this uh, release of tension they've been holding. Often it's fear tension. And when you release it, help them release it, um, it really builds the trust, trust with the animal. Another interesting thing is when you learn how to read responses from your dog or your horse, um, that's a huge benefit. But once your dog or your horse gets that you're paying attention to them, like when you find something and you back off or wait there until they release it, they get that you get it. That's when they really start to trust you. So those are the main reasons. Anyways, I think that's it. Everybody's waiting goodbye. Nellie's going to come say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye. Joop's going to come say goodbye. Oh, big stretch. Big stretch. Well, you're going to, there's another one. You're going to find out a lot of these, you know, after responses too. They're in the book. Stretching uh, when, you, when the horse or the dog, when you release tension in the body, they want to go through the range of motion on their own and they'll reach around and scratch or, or stretch or in this case do the doggy stretch. Anyways, it's endless learning once you start paying attention to your animal. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs>